Welcome back to the class on human resources management. My name is Aradhana Malik and I have been helping you with this course and uh, today uh, we will talk about a uh, topic that is very important uh, to me personally and that is handling difficult employees. In the previous class we talked about grievance procedures, how you can deal with grievances, disciplining uh, in the workplace and uh, in this class we will talk about uh, how do you handle difficult employees who, who uh, uh, in the uh, work situation. So, let us get on with it. Uh, some sources, we have the same book by Gomez Mejia, Balkin and Cardi and there are a few more papers that uh, have informed me or that I have used to discuss workplace bullying which is a very, very important topic in today's day and age and that is something that is very important to me personally also. Okay. Um, various issues that we face, um, you know when we talk about difficult employees, we are talking about employees in different kinds of situations. So, some of the issues that we will be covering in this lecture are one is employees that have been that have been uh, uh, found to have been using drugs uh, in discipline that is detected during electronic monitoring of any kind either through uh, closed circuit cameras and televisions or electronic mail if somebody is going through your mail and finds something undesirable. Uh, office romance is another one, very sensitive issue, we will talk about it a little bit in this lecture. Uh, absence or uh, poor attendance is another one, poor performance, you know people not performing up to the mark. Insubordination when your subordinates do not listen to you or when they misbehave with their superiors. Workplace bullying, very, very important topic. I will talk about it in greater detail than the rest of the topics and alcohol related misconduct. What do you do when employees are found to have been using drugs? How do you deal with that situation? Somebody tells you, you know, the matter is brought to you in your capacity as a human resource manager. And uh, so, what should you do if you are? if you come to know of this kind of a misconduct. The first thing you should do is find out if the employee's behavior has been disruptive to her or his own work or to anyone else's work in the workplace. So, you must find out why the employee has been using drugs and how for how long and whether the drug use is at the place of work or, or whether the person comes um, you know uh, drugged to work whether it is whether this drug use is affecting the employee's own productivity or whether it is leading to behaviors by the employee that disrupt the uh, the productivity the output of other employees in the workplace again i am uh, i'm a big fan of the age old adage of uh, uh, your personal space so uh, my nose ends where yours begins and so everybody has personal boundaries and i'm not i'm not condoning the use of drugs i'm not saying it's okay to use drugs but in our capacity as human resources managers our boundaries or the extent of our jurisdiction uh, is till the uh, only till the employees work till the employees contribution to the workplace so within the workplace if the employees behavior disrupts another person's work then we have a right to intervene, but we may not be it may not be considered appropriate for us to counsel somebody if the person's productivity is okay. So uh, again, you know, it depends on the law of the land. But as far as possible, whatever we say to the employee should be related to the employee's uh, output at the place of work. Then, legitimacy of drug use and false positives. For example, an employee is found to be behaving inappropriately or the employee's output is not up to the mark and the employee is subjected to a drug test and on that day the employee has consumed uh, mm, poppy seeds which is more commonly known as khaskas in Hindi. Uh, so, uh, in the west you can find poppy seeds on bagels, in, in Hindi it is it's also it is known as posto in Bengali. So, khaskas is something that is uh, uh, very commonly 
used in many Indian dishes and if a person has consumed a significant amount of khaskas, then the person could be, it could test positive for opium use and that is not right. Uh, you know, it, it and if it is not affecting the person's output, then it may not be right to intervene. So, the legitimacy of drug use needs to be determined before taking any kind of disciplinary action. Um, treatment of positive drug use tests, if somebody has been found to be using drugs coming to work in a drugged condition or is found to be disturbing others or is not productive uh, at work. So, let us assume that all of that has been established, then what do you do? Should you intervene? Should you discharge the employee? Should you treat the employee? Now, in the previous lecture, we spoke about uh, progressive disciplining techniques and I am very much in favor of using the progressive disciplining techniques or positive disciplining techniques for the simple reason that we are all humans. In our capacity as human resources manager, we should uh, or human resources professionals, we should always strive to support the people that we are working with. So, uh, we should not, our job is not to point fingers at people and say you are bad, you have done this, you have not done this, we are going to throw you out, no. We have recruited employees, significant of a uh, significant amount of time and effort has gone into the recruitment of employees, into training employees, into helping them become a part of the organization that we serve. So, in order to keep these employees motivated and in order to uh, you know uh, to get the maximum output from these employees instead of firing them and waiting for another person to join and wondering what the other person is going to do it would help much more if we supported the employees and helped them get out of a bad habit if they have a bad habit that is disrupting their work we could start with counseling we could start by finding out what it is that has caused this kind of misconduct and then move on to helping them with the treatment, giving them support and giving them a reasonable period of time in which to correct their actions. And if even then they do not improve, then maybe we have to take the, the more difficult uh, route and discharge the employees. So, uh, then again this is something that I am going to stress on uh, a lot during this lecture and that is maintenance of confidentiality. If we find out that somebody is using drugs, abusing drugs, then we should take every possible measure to ensure that the details of this misuse are not communicated to the rest of the office community to, to the person's peers. So, confidentiality of test results, confidentiality of the issue must be maintained at all costs. <coughs> electronic monitoring, various types of electronic monitoring may be there. One is installing closed circuit cameras in your organization. If your organization is selling something, then it is absolutely okay to install closed circuit cameras to prevent shoplifting, to prevent thieves. Hmm. But do you really need to have a closed circuit camera say uh, in front of uh, a dining hall? Should you really have closed circuit cameras in front of say the area uh, uh, for bathrooms? So, do we really need to have closed circuit cameras there? Why? So, you know the necessity of installing closed circuit cameras should be ascertained before installing closed circuit cameras. It is uh, it's very essential to maintain the dignity or to ensure the dignity of the employees and the customers in your organization and, and uh, being under constant surveillance is not something very comfortable. And you must also uh, justify the need for scanning the emails of your employees if it is being done and if it is being done, then this should be communicated to all employees in writing and it should be communicated in such a way that everybody knows that this is being done. This information should be available on a public portal at all times. Okay, so, people should know that they are being watched and that will immediately uh, prevent the indulgence in unwarranted uh, behavior or uh, unreasonable behavior. Anyway, 
and uh, this so this communication should go out people should know that they are being watched now it becomes tricky you know these situations can become very tricky is it so bad for an employee to take a break after the employee has done whatever is expected after the employee has put in a certain number of hours is it so important to prevent the employee from casually browsing some websites maybe either during lunch time or even during work hours for maybe 10 15 minutes in a day maybe maybe not i don't know the organization can determine what impact this will have on their productivity as opposed to electronic media loafing habitual electronic loafing which means a person is constantly in the habit of playing video games in the habit of surfing the net without being productive at work for which she or he is being paid so preventing the employees from sending personal emails from the office computer if you have very critical confidential information of course that may be necessary but otherwise is it such a big deal i don't know the organization has to determine whether this is reasonable or not uh so all those you know these things need to be considered before figuring out whether to discipline the employees the other thing is again i'll stress on this confidentiality 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 has to be maintained if something like this has, is, is detected so that the employee is not ostracized so that the employee is not treated unfairly by his or her peers so uh, any time any kind of indiscipline is detected the employee should be called by the supervisor given feedback in private and allowed or given a chance to correct his or her behavior uh, within a reasonable period of time <coughs> handling office romance is another one uh when we office romance is a very sensitive issue in this day and age when people are running when people are you know with this fast paced life youngsters do not have the time to mingle with people of the same age so where do they find partners office is the one place where they go they meet people who like minded people you know so it is very likely that office romance may blossom in such situations but the organization has to decide what the impact of this kind of situation will be on the organization's activities and the climate it is not considered appropriate <coughs> for any kind of uh, uh, romantic association occurring between a superior and a subordinate because of the potential to misuse this you know it can be misconstrued as the superior having power over the subordinate's career over the subordinate's professional life and the the association can be perceived as unethical in many ways and that can be a hotbed for uh, further problem whether office romance between peers who are not really doing anything that is interdependent is so bad i don't know the office has to determine how and how much this impacts the office the productivity of the people involved and and that should be a basis for deciding the policy and when the policy is decided the policy should be written down in clear cut terms the do's and don'ts should be written down should be explained and should be communicated to the employees in writing with the details of the possible consequences if something like this is detected so all of this should be written down and a reasonable action should be taken reasonable decisions should be taken regarding these types of situations uh and whenever if and when this is discovered confidentiality should be maintained absolutely essential to maintain confidentiality regarding personal matters of two people who are involved what is good what is right what is ethical what is unethical i will not comment on that what the society expects what the society accepts is up to the society so i'm not here to preach i'm not here to tell you what is right or what is wrong i'm just telling you that this situation if the situation affects the output of the people involved yes this is a cause for concern and the it is okay for the hr person to intervene it is okay for the supervisors to intervene and say and counsel the people who are involved and remind them of their responsibilities to the office if it's not affecting the work that is going on in the office if it's not affecting the output of the employees in the office i 
don't know what purpose it would serve to intervene in the personal lives of the people involved but the organization has to take a decision on that <coughs> The other issue that we will discuss is absence or poor attendance. Some people are constantly in the habit of missing work. Some people are constantly in the habit of coming to work late. Some people are constantly in the habit of, of taking off without taking authorized leave. So one needs to find out, uh, you know, if something like this is detected, if, if on a particular day several employees do not show up one needs to go through the, the person's uh, records and see how reasonable it would be to counsel these employees. The attendance rule should be reasonable, it should take into account exigencies, it should take into account any personal emergencies the person may have, it should also take into account the needs of a diverse workforce. Uh, I think um, I am more uh, in favor of uh, particularistic application of rules and policies and laws because I come from such a diverse country like India and uh, I, think, I think one should make some adjustment to the, uh, uh, to the diverse needs of people coming from different communities, from coming, coming from different regions and once in a while some flexibility can be given to the employees. If that is done, the commitment of the employees is likely to go up. The organization has to take a decision regarding these policies. For example, a person is told that uh, you know a person misses work on some day because their child is sick or they have to take their parents to the hospital and uh, or they have a PTA meeting, parent teacher association meeting. Uh, I do not think you know why this should be such a big deal you know unless of course there are deadlines that are being missed unless of course they have not planned ahead of uh, time unless of course there is nobody else who can do their work. But in terms of emergency somebody is sick in their family and they have to attend to them. If it does not become a habit then uh, some amount of flexibility should not hurt the organization. So, so you know it is it's a very tricky situation but the organization has to determine how reasonable their rule is and employees should be warned ahead of time about this rule. The rule should be easy to understand. Employees should be warned ahead of time and they should know what will happen to them if their attendance is not up to the mark, if the attendance is poor. Uh, giving the employee a chance to defend herself or himself is absolutely necessary in case of any kind of indiscipline, in case of any kind of misconduct and the situation should be assessed in a reasonable manner and again if something like this is detected and somebody is counselled then confidentiality of this should be maintained at all costs. Poor performance is another one if the uh, if an employee you know before even deciding how to discipline employees with poor performance reasonable standards should be set for performance of the employees. Employees should know what is expected of them. Uh, reasonable accommodation should be made for employees who are likely to perform uh, uh, differently than others and there should be reasonable accommodation for exigencies. So, all of these things should be built into the performance policies and the performance standards of the organization should be communicated to all employees as far ahead of time in as clear m manner as possible. The documentation of poor performance followed by counseling and remedial measures should be done before the punishment is given. Again, I am emphasizing on this point that we need to help the employees succeed. Our job as HR professionals is not to put down anyone, it is not to punish anyone, it is to help all the employees succeed to the best of their ability. Then if something like this is discovered, one needs to maintain confidentiality regarding the need for corrective action and punishment. So that is absolutely essential. I cannot stress on this enough. We need to be keep maintain confidentiality as far as possible. Okay. Telecommuting is another issue here. Uh, telecommuting is not such a problem if it is not abused. Telecommuting refers to people working from home to people working from locations other than their 
office, but this can cause some problems in the workplace and which means people may take the telecommuting option, uh, uh, you know uh, people may abuse this telecommuting option and say they are working from a location, but they may not be working as much as they are saying they are working. So, that can create a problem, that can create a reason for uh, the organization to doubt their credibility and commitment to the work that they have undertaken. Now, to prevent this one should select the telecommuters with care considering the work habits of the employee and the type of work that is involved. If the type of work that is involved gives them or is going to the quality of this work is not going to be affected by the fact that people are uh, commuting are doing their work sitting in another location it is fine, but as far as possible you know th th this should be considered before framing a policy for uh, telecommuting. Then the make sure the, the telecommuters stick to their deadlines, they should be given reasonable deadlines and if they do not uh, follow those deadlines, if they do not adhere to those deadlines some corrective actions, some concern should be expressed, they should be warned so that they know that what is expected of them and by when and they know that this option can be taken away uh, if they do not do what they are saying they do. Um, if this option is given to, to people to employees, then it is the responsibility of the supervisors, it is the responsibility of the office administration to ensure that the technology works at the end of the telecommuters. So, people should have access to stable network connections or phone connections in order for them to use this connection, uh, sorry to use this option. So, uh, if somebody has a bad network con connection, if somebody has a bad phone connection, then uh, it will not be possible uh, for them to be productive while telecommuting. So, it is absolutely essential that uh, the telecommuters are have a stable connections, stable technology, uh, dependable technology that they can use to telecommute. Have a phone, have phone based workers come into the office on a regular basis, so they can attend meetings and interact with the managers. If workers are doing things on the phone, then there should be some point of contact, some contact hours at which they report develop a well planned telecommuters plan that includes performance expectations with measurable results. So, there should they should be given a plan, they should be given deadlines, they should be told what is required by when and their work should be managed, their work should be monitored very very closely and this should not become a term of employment to avoid problems at a later stage. Insubordination is another one, insubordination means that the employee refuses to obey a direct order from a supervisor and uh, is a direct challenge to the management's right to run the company. Boss says you do something, you say I will not do it, that is called insubordination. It may occur when an employee is verbally abusive to the supervisor. So, the employee uses unreasonable words, uses bad words against the supervisor. Now, insubordination is acceptable only and only if B or you, you may not be penalized for insubordination if the orders that are given to you are illegal or relate to an illegal activity or result in you having to perform an illegal activity. It may not also be applicable or, or, or your refusal to do the work that has been assigned to you may not be counted as insubordination if the employee feels that he or she is in some kind of danger. Uh, because of that order. So, of course, barring the defense services in which danger to your life is a part of your job description. So, uh, the onus lies on the employee to prove the reason for insubordination. Managing insubordination, how do you manage insubordination? In order to prevent problems for uh, uh, relating to insubordination, uh, it is always helpful to have uh, written orders instead of oral orders. So, you you know wherever you feel that a controversy can come up, please issue written orders. So, the employee can communicate their dissent in writing and if the employee feels strongly about it, maybe you know it would be ok. Proof of insubordination would be required or should be required. Seriousness of the issue should be considered uh, when 
deciding whether to punish an employee for insubordination or not. The reason for insubordination should also be taken into account. Whenever you suspect insubordination, it will help if you can find out why the employee did not do what was expected and please maintain confi confidentiality of the issue if it is detected and the reprimands that are given to the employees if insubordination is detected. Okay. Workplace bullying, topic very, very close to my heart and I will spend little bit of time on this. Workplace bullying is a form of harassment that results in employees experiencing mental distress, physical illness, loss of productivity and a higher propensity to quit to avoid being in a toxic environment. If employees feel that they are under stress, then that is called workplace because of the behavior of either their boss or their peers, then it is called workplace bullying. It consists of persistent, ongoing, offensive, abusive, intimidating, malicious or insulting behavior, abuses of power or unfair penal sanctions, which makes the recipient feel upset, threatened, humiliated or vulnerable, uh, which undermines their self confidence and which may cause them to suffer stress. So, any situation in which the employee feels threatened by the behavior of his or her superiors or peers and pulls their self confidence down and causes them stress is called workplace bullying. Somebody constantly tells you, you are bad, you are good for nothing, nobody trusts you, nobody will be nice to you, you think you are doing things right, but everybody says something otherwise, this is your reputation, how dare you think otherwise, why should people come to you for help, why should they approach you for help, you are known as a tyrant, you are known as a, you know, so they will, I mean people, there are some people who put the blame for, for the bad things they do on others and they constantly point fingers at their subordinates to keep them in their place. And uh, that is a form of workplace, workplace bullying and, and, and should not be tolerated and, but employees tolerate it because they do not want to say anything about their bosses and that in turn affects their health and that in turn affects their productivity as well. Types of bullying, false accusations, somebody could say, uh, uh, you know, uh, could say that you have made a mistake when you have not made a mistake ignoring or dismissing comments or inputs, you give some inputs and people do not want to take them into account, different set of standards or policies used for the worker as opposed to some other people who are in the in group of the boss. So, somebody is treated one way, the, the, the person who is being bullied is treated another way, gossip is spread about the worker, you go and you know if somebody says um, uh, really bad things about the, the concerned person in public constant criticism by boss and co-workers, you are good for nothing, you do not deserve anything, you should not be given this, belittling comments made about the worker in public or in private, you are told to your face that you are not, you know, so uh, that, that you are good for nothing or, or your, I mean, so of course, saying that your work is not up to the mark is one thing, but constantly telling you that you are bad, you are bad, you are bad, you are bad is workplace bullying and should not be tolerated, yelling at the subordinate, raising your voice, uh, purposeful exclusion from projects or meetings is another one. So, uh, you are not given the opportunity you deserve, uh, giving credit of targeted employees work to other workers or denying credit to targeted employee is another one. So, the, you do the work, but somebody else gets the credit for it and making personal comments about the workers. How do you manage workplace bullying? Uh, keep detailed documentation as far as possible. Uh, talk to the bully and find out what is going on. Focus on the resolution or the way forward instead of putting the blame on the employee always. Um, devise and implement a workplace bullying and harassment policy. Communicate this policy. Promote a culture in which bullying and harassment are not tolerated at all. Be aware of the organizational factors that are associated with bullying and take steps to address them. Uh, follow procedures laid down in, their, in the organization's bullying and harassment policy. Lay down a policy and follow the procedures that have been laid down. Be sensitive, objective and seek information to find out where bullying is occurring, why bullying is occurring, who is being bullied, who is bullying, etcetera. Know what is bullying and what is not. I told you 
your boss telling you that you are not performing up to the mark is not bullying, but you being belittled constantly is bullying. Uh, focus on the issue and not on the persons involved, just say that this needs to be done and if it is not done then address the issue. Do not single out an employee for discipline, if it is an issue then everybody uh, doing whatever is not expected should be treated the exact same way. Uh, do not respond to employee mistakes with an accusing tone and do not point fingers and say this is bad, this is bad, you have done this, you have not. So, you know constantly putting the employee in a spot is uh, going to make matters worse. Uh, be cautious of jokes, <coughs> many times we think our sense of humor is so great that it can help improve the situation, may or may not be so and a person who is already feeling low, who is already feeling victimized may not feel very comfortable with uh, you know with, with any kinds of jokes. Uh, keep reprimands private, do not say negative things to the employee, do not be hypersensitive, uh, do not uh, 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 do not react, over react to situations. Uh, so, specific strategies to manage workplace bullying in response to the bully, what do you do? You act quickly, inform the relational aggressor that the behavior is not acceptable first verbally and then in writing, uh, change the job responsibilities primarily to avoid contact between the victim and the aggressor, let the aggressor you know separate the two physically separate the two as far as possible uh, and then monitor the behavior of the concerned parties. Uh, supervision is absolutely essential, so uh, you know uh, then training is people should know what relational aggression is and what they can do about it. Performance review gives you another chance to give the people feedback regarding this. For the victim relocation or reassignment primarily to avoid contact with the aggressor, so physically separating the two, mentoring coaching people, individual treatment and support if one person has been victimized and if a number of people have been victimized then group treatment and support can help. For the organization review your hiring policies, firing practices, do not be scared of firing aggressive employees, uh, development and implementation of anti-bullying policy that addresses identification of bullies and lays down procedures for dealing with them. Uh, reporting, create a formal non-judgmental reporting procedure for victims to identify relational aggressors without fear or retaliation. Uh, employees should feel comfortable coming to an HR person with their or to somebody in the organization with their concerns and people should know what bullying is and what is what it is not. Uh, the last type of misconduct that I will deal with is alcohol related misconduct. Uh, you need to uh, find out the difference between chronic alcoholism versus inebriated employees in the workplace versus use of alcohol at work. Severity of misconduct is another one, how bad is the misconduct, uh, is it related to, is it disrupting the work, it is similar to what you would do in a drug use case you know, how much is the person's dependence on alcohol disturbing the others in the workplace and uh, you can take uh, corrective counseling and remedial action and only then should you discharge the employee. Please help the employee before you decide to discharge them. Alcoholism like drug use is a disease and the employee should be supported to overcome it and please maintain confidentiality of the records as far as possible. Uh, th that is where I will stop as far as this lecture is concerned and I will talk to you a little bit more about how to handle these situations in the next class. So, thank you for listening.